Hey everyone, how's it going and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create some alien looking sci-fi sort of stylized grass using geometry nodes in Blender 3.0 and above using geometry nodes and Eevee. Just some cool procedural stuff that you can do, take, learn some different ideas and maybe take them and do what you want with them. This is just something I've used for an upcoming scene on the dark following too. If you want to save yourself some time, there's a link to download this file in the description below. So please head down there and get that if you want to save 10 minutes of your life. But otherwise for now, let's just get straight into the video. So firstly, we're going to open our new scene and go to the geometry nodes tab and we're going to change this spreadsheet window to a timeline. In the settings panel, make sure ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections are all turned on and on ambient occlusion, up the distance to 10 meters. This is just general practice that I like to do when setting up a scene. Now in the geometry node setup, delete the group input and add a mesh primitive and a grid. This is basically just going to replace our default cube with a plane that we can fully customize and control. Change the size on the X and Y to 5, but for no reason whatsoever, just so we can get a larger scale object and if you've seen the city tutorial we're going to do a similar thing and add a distribute points on face node an instance on points node and lastly a join geometry connect the grid to the join geometry as well as the distribute points on faces connect points to the points and the instance on points instances to the join geometry lastly connect all of that to the group output and nothing's really happened that's because there's nothing to distribute so we're going to add a mesh primitive and a cone Drop the vertices down to three and plug the mesh into the instance of the instance on points. Now we've just basically got a load of pyramids. So if we reduce the radius of the bottom to something like 0.2 and the radius on the top to well, 0.05 kind of gives you a triangular head. We want it to be small, but not too small. So I'm going to go 0.05. Also, we're going to add a random value node in and connect that to the scale of the instance on points and just change the minimum and maximum on that just so we get a bit of variation in the individual size of the blades of grass. We don't want them all to be uniform. I mean, you might want them to, but I, I don't. Now, if we go over to the material preview, uh, something I want to show you quickly that's a cool technique. If we click on the light in the scene and switch it over to firstly be sun, make sure we have our scene light selected so we can see this, bring the value down to Something that's really important to do is on the shadow option, make sure contact shadows is turned on. This is really, really important that you should make sure you do this in every scene you do. You'll see here contact shadows basically makes the light source cast shadows from individual objects properly, as well as just within themselves. It's a really small detail. I don't know why it's not on by default, but just make sure you add it. It adds a bit more depth to your scene. Just a little trick there to make sure you carry with you beyond this tutorial. Now let's add a material quickly, vertically slice this window into the shader, call this material something crazy like grass, and we're going to add a converter color ramp in. We're also going to add an input geometry, and lastly, just a converter separate X, Y, Z. Connect the position to the vector and the Z output of the separate X, Y, Z to the factor of the color ramp. Now we're not really seeing anything and that's because we need to add a material and set material node in our geometry nodes to make sure that the cones know to use this grass material. So, so connect that in between the cone and the instance on points, select the grass. And now you'll see, if we go over to the material, that the left side of our color ramp is going to be what's on the bottom of the blades of grass and the, uh, the right side is going to be what's at the top. So we can change the colors here to create some really funky looking sci-fi alien looking grass planet. It's very No Man's Sky like. And I'm gonna go for a pink and a yellow, but this could be whatever you want it to be. And lastly, we're just gonna add a noise texture and a bump map, connect that and plug that into the normal, just to get a bit more detail, a bit more definition on the grass. So it's not blocks, complete blocks, just a bit more detail. Bring the strength down, but up the scale and the detail and the roughness as well, just so there's a tiny bit of detail on that grass. You might not want to do this, but I always like to have a bit of definition in there. Make sure we apply this as well to the grid by duplicating that set material and putting it between the grid and the join geometry. And that way the grid will be whatever the base color of our material on the color ramp is. Now, how do we animate all of this? Well, follow me here. I'm going to go through this quite quickly. So just add the nodes that I'm adding in. We're going to add a position node, a vector math node, Make sure that's set to add, connect the position to the vector. We're also going to add a noise texture. 
duplicate our add node and switch this to be subtract, duplicate that and change it to be scale. Now we're just going to connect all of these up as you see on screen and connect that scale to the rotation of our instance on points. Now this is going to look a little bit funky, but what we're going to do first is just change our subtract values to 0.5 and that's basically just going to make sure that everything's aligned uh, vertically as it should be. Now, if we move along on the X of our add vector, um, that is going to move the grass, but we want this to be permanently moving. So if we type in here, hashtag frame forward slash 25, it's going to permanently add a driver to this, which is constantly moving our grass. And it's going to use the noise texture as the factor for that to go along. So if we switch to the top down view here, you'll actually see that if we play around with the uh, scale on the scale node that we've made, that will basically be the power of the wind. And then if we move, if we change the settings on the texture, you can actually see the shape of the texture from this top down view. You see, if we change the scale, you can actually see that in the way the, uh, the wind moves. It's not really wind, but we're simulating that. Play around with the color a bit more. And I brought the uh, radius of the bottom of the grass up a little bit just to make it slightly more thicker and sort of make sure you don't see the gaps in between the grass, just sort of blend it together a bit more. You might want there to be gaps, that's up to you, but I kind of like this thicker look. And if we just play around with the random value min max on the scale and also the uh, depth of the cone as well, you can really get the sort of scaling of the grass that is right for you. Lastly, what we might want to do as well is duplicate this vector math add node and connect the scale and the distribute points on faces rotation to that and then plug that into the rotation and this will mean that if we add a different shape in as our mesh primitive so a sphere for example it'll mean that all of the grass blades point out correctly in alignment with the, uh, the the normal of that shape without that everything would be pointing upwards all the time which we don't want it to do we want it to point outwards so add a cone or a cube or something else in then it will always align them it kind of looks like a fluffy Pokemon or something. I mean, we're not even in grass territory anymore. This kind of looks like fur. So you can really play around with this. It's quite a powerful tool. On the color ramp as well, we can add more colors into this if you want to really get precise with the different colors. Another thing we can do as well is instead of changing all of the colors on the color ramp every time, we just add a hue saturation node in and just switch the hue of that around. And that way you always get this nice gradient without having to change all of these values all the time. You just switch that hue value up and down. I mean, if you wanted to, you could just be plain or boring and just go with green if you just wanted green grass. Ultimately, that's that's all it kind of is, is a, is a grass tutorial, but with a bit more of a stylistic element and with the colors and the shape of it as well. Play around with the shape and settings of the noise texture for the amount of wind that you want going through, the, the craziness of the wind. Play around with the scale for the amount of power you want with that wind. Play around with the depth and the random value on the height, min max, to sort of get that scaling of the grass correctly. Play around with the colors. You can really create some very nice and almost be beautiful looking grass here. All procedurally generated, all completely customizable and controllable within Blender. Thanks so much for watching. If this video was helpful, please do give it a like and a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe for more content like this in the future. Like I say, there is a link to download this in the description below. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.